Hi everyone and welcome to another study. So for today's study we're going to be looking at the time of the end of the world. So let's go ahead and jump in and before we get into our theme verses we have a couple of questions for the study. We need to know what our options are. We need to be informed. Luke 17 24 by faith Moses when he became of age refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. That's option A. Then two, option B, enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Okay, and so the next question is, is the cost too great for you? This is a question that really needs some consideration. Luke 14, 28, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he's laid the foundation is not able to finish it, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build a tower and was not able to finish it. Verse 33, so likewise, whoever of you who does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how will it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears, let him hear. So let's jump into our theme verses then. And the, the idea here is in the face of destruction, which is now occurring, seek God. Isaiah 37, 1. And so it was when King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, went into the house of the Lord. Then he sent Eliakim, who was over the house, Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. He said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, this day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. For the children have come to birth, but there is no strength to bring them forth. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Isaiah 66, 7. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a male child. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord? Shall I who cause delivery shut up the womb, says your God? Okay, so for the first point, the world economy is crumbling and there is widespread civil unrest. Revelation 16, 12, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl in the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way from the kings from the east may be prepared. The kings of the east are God and Christ. Psalms 48, 4, For behold, the kings assembled. They passed by together. They saw it, and they marveled. They were troubled. They hastened away. Fear took hold of them, and pain as a woman in birth pangs, as when you break the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. Again, the destruction of the world economy. Matthew 24, 7, For nation, ethnos, will rise against nation, so we have internal strife, and kingdom against kingdom. We have countries at war. There will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Jeremiah 49, 3, Against Damascus, Hamath, and Arpad are shamed, for they have heard bad news. They are faint-hearted. There is trouble on the seas. Seas are peoples. It cannot be quiet. Damascus has grown feeble. She turns to flee, and fear has seized her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her like a woman in labor. Moving on to the next point, your former brethren, your church family, and your actual family will hate you and cast you out. Isaiah 66, 5. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your brethren who hated you, who cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy, but they will be ashamed. Matthew 10, 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the world. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Matthew 24, 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Okay, you will lose everything for the truth. Hebrews 10, 32. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly because you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you have compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. 
Luke 14, 33. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. 1 Corinthians 4, 11, In the present hour we both hunger and thirst. We're poorly clothed, beaten, and homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure. Being defamed, we entreat. We have become as a field of the world, the off-scouring of all things until now. So, quote, Christianity will be the persecutors, the amalgam beast. Revelation 13, 1, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was a leopard. There, this is describing the amalgam. He is an amalgam of all the four worldwide empires that all had idolatry. A leopard... His feet were like the feet of a bear, and the mouth of the mouth of a lion, or Babylon. The dragon gave him his power. Satan gave him his power, his throne, and his authority. Now I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded. This was the papacy in 1798, and his deadly wound was healed. All the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like the beast, who is able to make war with him. So we have the amalgam beast, which is not only the Roman Catholic Church, but also fallen Protestantism. All right, history is going to repeat itself through the persecution by the papal alliance. That is one of the hallmarks of prophecy. We have the times, time, and half a time of persecution from 538 through 1798 by the papacy, the beast power. All right, the king of the north is going to try to move in for the final kill, but then deliverance will come. And just to highlight again, this amalgam beast is headed by fallen Protestantism with the beast power controlling in the background. Isaiah 37, 7, Surely I will send a spirit upon him, and he will hear a rumor, and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Therefore thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, this is the typical king of the north, he shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow, nor come before it with a shield, nor be, build a siege mount against it. By the way he came, by the same way he shall return, and he shall not come into this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city, this church, Jerusalem from above, to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Of course, David is Jesus. Then the angel of the Lord, Jesus, went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. Daniel 11:40. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him. This is happening in 1798. We have these atheistic uh, forces from the south. They're attacking this papal institution, the king of the north. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through. But news or a rumor from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. But he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Thus he is trying to fulfill his title of pontifex, bridge builder, but he will come to his end and no one will help him. Okay, so now let's look at deliverance by Christ for the remnant. And we have Elijah as a type for the time of the end. He is dwelling with the widow, which is the bride of Christ, the true church. We have the bread, which is the word, and the oil, the spirit, will not fail until the sound of rain is near. And we are waiting now for that latter rain. Isaiah 32, 1, Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule in justice. A man will be as a hiding place from the wind, that's Jesus, and a cover from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. 1 Kings 17, 1, And Elijah the Tishbite and the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God lives, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain all these years, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, and saying, Go away from here, turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you will drink from the brook, as I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, and he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. 
1 Kings 17, 8, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, or the winepress, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he rose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was gathering sticks. He said to her, Please give me a little water that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called and said, Please bring a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord lives, I do not have a bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in the jar. And then Elisha comes back, verse 14, For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. All right, this next section is really exciting. Because of the peace within us, the Spirit of Christ it will move and all of nature will be our protector. Hosea 2.16 And it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me my husband and you will no longer call me my master or Baal. For I will take from her mouth the names of the Baals and they shall be remembered no more. In that day I will make a covenant with them, with the beasts of the field, with the birds of the air, and with the creeping things of the ground. Bow and sword of battle I will shatter from the earth to make them lie down safely. Ezekiel 34, 22, Therefore I will save my flock, they shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will establish one shepherd over them, Jesus, and he will feed them, my servant David. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince, again, Jesus among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will make a covenant of peace with them and cause wild beasts to cease from the land, and they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will make them in the places of around my hill a blessing, and I will cause showers to come down in their season. There will be showers of blessing. Isaiah 66, 24, It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They will not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Okay, so let's talk briefly about the synagogue of Satan. Unfortunately, they are going to be deceived until the very end, which is the harvest. And they will keep evangelizing or buying and selling even after the close of probation. Luke 17, 26, And as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall also be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, it shall be in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2. For you yourselves know perfectly the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so the day should overtake you as a thief. You are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness, therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. Revelation 13, 6, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand, or on their foreheads, and no one may buy or sell, we look at Isaiah 55, 1, to see what that means, except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. All right, for the last slide, I make an appeal to you. If you have been Laodicean in your personal life, or you are participating in a church that is Laodicean, it's not too late to disembark. Do it now before probation closes. Matthew 19, 16. Now behold, one came to him and said, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may have eternal life? He said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But, but if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. And the man said, Which ones? He had the mindset he was showing partiality of the law. He wanted to make one of the commandments greater than all the others. Perhaps the Sabbath commandment. Jesus said to him, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He's quoting him the law according to the letter. The young man said to him, all these have I kept since my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. 
That is the law according to the Spirit. Verse 22, But when the young man heard that saying, he went away very sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So I finished this study really briefly off by saying, Is the tower construction too much for you? Because you are not going to be saved in the Laodicean condition. Christ and Belial cannot joy live in our hearts together. If you do not die to self and you do not live for Christ, you will not be saved. You might as well go into the world and enjoy sin for a season. Blessings to you in the name of Jesus.